Welcome to the Big Honker Podcast, brought to you by Hemp Hill Farm. 20% off your next online order. Use code BHP at checkout. That's Hemp Hill, H-E-M-P-H-I-L-L-P-H-A-R-M.com. It's my gummies I go to bed to every night. does great. Don't take them if you got to take a piss test at work because you may test hot. So, anyways, <laughs> Hemp don't, Hill don't Farm. take it, Chandler. <laughs> yeah. If you got to take a piss test at work, you might want to make it. It doesn't have... TH was it THC THC it's just got CBD but you don't want to take a chance because hey. it is the variant of the was it Delta eight yeah Delta eight yes I guess I don't know yeah, it's Delta eight on with us today Mr Chandler Phillips on the fucking tour bud yes sir how is that it's a good feeling uh you know working hard all year trying to get there and but. Got one tournament left, and then it's uh, then it's hunting season. You gonna come up here? If y'all want me to, yeah, come oh, on. You're, you're always welcome. Yeah, just let me. Just I mean, you got an open invitation. Just let me know when, and we'll make we'll make room. So you got your tour card. Does that mean that you can go check into any PGA tour and play now? How does that work? Uh, certain events, yes, sir. Uh, they've they've changed a lot. Um. This coming year, there's going to be uh, were I mean, last year there were some too, but like the designated events, like the the really big purses, there's no cut. Those events, I'm gonna have to play myself into them. If I play well enough, I can get into those. Uh, but any open um, field PGA Tour event, I uh, I should be able to get into. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask you a question, and you may not be able to answer this, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but I'm curious. And that you're nervous now because you know me and you know how I talk. But <laughs> is the LIV, was that good for the PGA Tour? The consolidation? I think there was some good. Yeah. I mean, um, <laughs> some good and some bad. I just, you can look, everybody looked at it totally different. Uh, everybody had their own opinion on it. And, but I think in the long run, I think it's going to be good. Especially like if they end up, they're they're saying that they're going to join. You know, they've come to a you know agreement. Don't know when that's all going to happen, but I think I think it's going to be good. You know, I, I think those guys that went to the live are eventually going to be able to come back. And there's a lot of big names that went that way. And uh, yeah, I don't I don't see any wrong with it. I mean, guys were getting paid and shit ton of money like good for them I yeah i don't blame them uh i mean i i i'd, I'd, I'd be lying if i said <laughs> if i if i if i would have turned it down but you know uh i'm just happy to make it to the pga tour now and be able to play that i think competition in anything is the way to go i wish i think it drives for a be- i think it i think it produces a better product you're just bitching result. about black vanguard and stuff they got a fucking monopoly. <laughs> it's still competition. <laughs> they started out. They just were better at it than everybody else. Same with Amazon. They were better at what they done, but it was competition. They just took it over. So make up right. your mind. Are you for competition or not? I'm all the way okay. for competition. Right. I've never... I'm just keeping you in check There's fucking collusion here. here is what's going on with BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street. Oh. That's a totally different subject. Okay. I'm yeah. for... I think it produces a better product. So I, if the XFL and all that other shit, I think if if MLB had a competition, you would see better product uh, on the MLB front. I don't think they may still go to games. Well, that's, that's baseball. But I think that it drives competition is good for everybody. I used to always think if the NFL played another two or three months, it'd be great. <clears throat> but I, but I really I've noticed this year they had the extra football games in the spring. Nobody wants to watch fucking football in the no, spring. No, it's got to be done in the fall. Yeah, it's, it's a ball sport. Now, my thing to you is, I'm a big John Daly fan. 
I would love to have John Daly on the podcast. I think John Daly would be great. Did you see him at college football the other day when he said, well, I don't know for sure I'm drunk. I mean, my fucker is the, – they need to push him more as the, the face of PGA. Old drunk guy because that's what the average golfer relates to that guy. Yeah, I mean, he, that dude's got a lot of fans uh, just because of that. Yeah, he's – I mean, I, I'm a fan. I mean, he – Back in the day, hell, still right now. I mean, he's he's doing pretty good on the Champions Tour too. He's not doing too bad, um, but back in the day, that dude was unreal, and he was. Does he not give a shit like he pretend like he portrays, or like do you think he's secretly like out there fucking playing courses and stuff? Beats me, man. I don't know. So, because like to me, like that would just drive like because I. I am not gifted at anything. I've got a little dick and I don't quit. Like that's <laughs> that's all I got going for me, okay? Like I'm too fucking dumb to quit. Okay? Honesty. You got honesty going for you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, I'm I'm an open book. A little dick and I don't quit. That's all I have. Is just I've got a, a no quit attitude. I will grind until I can't until the final whistle. But to right. see somebody like him that just fucking, you know, he 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 comes to the course Hung over, does a little stretch, cracks open a uh, what's he what's you know what's he Diet drink? Coke Diet Coke during the game, and then yeah. what you know a cigarette and what's the course record? And that's how he starts his yeah. day. To me, that would upset me because like, to, for me to be good at anything, I've got to put in the hours and the repetition because I am not just naturally gifted at anything. Did, so it would right, piss right. me off being another golfer, seeing the hours that I'm putting in to barely make it to the tour, to barely make it. You know, good at anything, and then here he comes and it's just, ah, let's let's go. I'll Did, stretch a little bit. I, what's he say? He doesn't stretch because you can't you can't pull fat or yeah. whatever. Have you read his book? No, I read his book and he talks about Tiger. First time he met Tiger was at Ardmore, Oklahoma, if my if my facts are right, in a junior deal, and Tiger with his dad, you know, Mister Discipline and blah blah blah. And he talked about this kid. He's like, man, this little black kid come up, and he could just stroke a golf ball. You knew he was going to be talented. And then he talks about him at the uh, Masters or somewhere. They were in the parking lot having a beer, him and some other guys sitting around drinking a cooler of beer. And Tiger walks by. He goes, hey, Tiger, come over and have a beer with us. He goes, I'm going to go work out for a little bit. He goes, work out? What the fuck are you working out for? He said, well, John, if I was as talented as you are, I wouldn't have to work out. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. I think John Daly is extremely talented. And he extremely doesn't give a fuck, and it it were it it bothers other people more than it does him. He loves his life because they see how he could have been one. Of the, he could have been a top five greatest golfer of all time if he would have put his grindstone to actually golf to golf. I think hey, I completely agree with that. Like the dude, the dude was unreal yep. back in the day. Like he was, uh, he. I mean, hell, at one time he was a top, you know, top five, I think. Yeah, he maybe. was, but he could have been the top five of all time if he would have actually concentrated on just golf. But he lived, and that's what life's about. I mean, fuck, right. go live your life. If you can afford to do it, I mean, the guy drove a bus for a while around everywhere and went golf course to golf course. They sh- He should be sponsored by M&Ms and Diet Coke. They missed the mark there. I'd have been sponsoring his ass. But he yeah. is – He's everything that the regular golfer to golf course wants to be. They want to be themselves, but they want to be a fucking stud golfer. He is that guy. He could go play to scramble at a small town and fit right in with everybody there because they like him. He lo- right. he, he goes to well, bed happy just about every day. He, uh, I saw a video of him not too long ago. I mean, it was you know older video, but he was talking about um, he was on like a podcast or something, and he said that. Uh, his his best rounds of his life, he you know stay out all night, get hammered, wake up, get two hours of sleep, show up, play barefooted, and he'd shoot course record. And I was just like, I mean that's a talent itself, yeah. you know. I mean it's one thing to be good at golf, but do do that in those <laughs> <laughs> conditions like. It takes time. He'd have been NFL quarterback back in the seventies with Joe Namath and Ken Stabler and all them partying all the fucking time and showing up and go to work. But maybe that's good. what made him special is that he just did not give a fuck and he could just go out there and rip it. Whatever happens, happens. Now the mental game, yeah. he didn't have a mental game because he just 
I don't want to say he didn't give a fuck, but it's kind of a I don't think he I don't did give a fuck attitude. Well, it's going to be interesting yeah. is how he mentors his son because his son's a really good golfer, up and coming. Is his son like eighteen or nineteen years old? And no, uh, he's a little bit. I think he's a little bit older than that. He's at Arkansas right now. Uh, playing. I wonder if John but, stays on his ass about working hard, being a better golfer, or if he don't give a fuck what he does. I don't know. I ain't. Ooh. But everybody's got a different approach to things, you know. I mean, just like yeah. Brady, you know, Brady was, you know, fuck, he watched film. Well, I mean, hell, it's just, it's just like yeah. me. Like, I, I mean, I, man, at these tournaments, I'll, you know, I get there an hour early, you know, hit some balls, put a few, chip a few. I always get there too damn early. Like, I mean. You give me 30 minutes and I'm good, but I always get there, you know, an hour early and I'll play. As soon as I get done, it's not that I hate the game or anything like that. It's just like, okay, I did what I needed to do today. If it was good, bad, I'm getting the hell out of there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go to the range and hit balls, do all that shit. And there's guys that will go and like hit balls for, an hour and a half after they play, I'm like, dude, y'all are going to be beat when it comes to like Saturday or Sunday. I mean, maybe y'all got more endurance than I have, but I mean, I'm not going to go wear myself out, you know? So right. I, I get there, I go play and then I'm out. Like, yeah, I'm not practicing my goose calling after a hunt. Like it's just, you yeah. know, I'm not going to go set up a practice decoy spread just so that I can get more efficient at setting up a decoy spread. Do you Hunt's over with. Right. Let's fucking let's relax and have a beer. Do you look at every, when, when when you're playing a course and there's <clears> geese <throat> or ducks on there? Do you look for bands in the, when you're playing in the tournament? Even, yeah, that's a yes. common deal. I wondered about that. There's a there's a course. Oh shit! What is it? Uh, it's in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, there's two banded geese out there. I don't know <laughs> if they're real, but I was walking off a of green and my dad was there. And uh, he was like, hey, and they're, I mean, they're right there. They're 15 feet from us. He's like, look, look. I'm like, I had a driver in my hand. I was like, <laughs> they get a little too close. I'm smoking that damn thing. I don't care. <laughs> I'll helicopter this damn club, eh? Have you ever had any wildlife, like, come up to you? Like, geese can be territorial at, cer- at certain points of the year on golf courses. What about gators? Uh, no, we really hadn't played anywhere where there had been, uh, gators in college. Yes. Uh, there was a place over in Myrtle beach. There was, there was a par five. <laughs> there's a, there's a big pond on the right and the hole and the hole just wrapped around the edge of the water. There was like five probably over each one of them were over nine, 10 foot. Like ain't nothing I'm fucking <laughs> with, you know? Like, so I like purposely like, okay, fuck this. I'm hitting it on the left side. Even if I'm in the rough, I ain't fucking with them damn things. Like <laughs> they can have that damn water. Like I'm not, I'm not getting anywhere close to that yeah, thing. That's their court. That's their territory. Did you see the video coming out of Florida? I guess like a 13 foot gator was walking down the walking down the road, and a guy that was jogging saw in the gator's mouth he had a human being. Huh? Yeah. No shit. Car- yeah. Walking around with a person. It's just a food in source for them. It's fucking mouth. So they had to call out uh, sheriffs and all this stuff, and they they killed the alligator. Well, you got to yeah, do that. But fucking I mean, walking around, and there's a dude in the gator's mouth. Well, here, here's my thing. It's like shark attack. Oh, my God, there's a shark attack. You're in their fucking backyard. What do you expect? Right. They're a predator, right. an apex predator. A gator's the same way, a big-ass 13-foot gator. Yeah. I mean, you fucking get... It's a man-eater. You got to watch where you're at. I mean, that's part of it. How many how many uh, people over in Africa get eaten by lions and shit? I mean, right. you're, you're not the top of the food chain there by any chance. Have you met Phil Mickelson yet? No, I, I saw a deal on Phil the other day. He's lost a billion dollars gambling the last couple of years or in his career. A billion dollars. And people are like, oh, my God, he's lost a billion dollars. Yeah, he's still worth $300 million. Good for Phil. He had a good time. 
Boy, you're just all about the good time. Just life's too <laughs> damn short. Jesus, life's short. God, fuck, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with that. But a See, billion? It's what? not like it's kept him from keeping the lights on. Yeah. Maybe the lights could have been a little bit brighter. Well, he maybe he'd have won two billion. <laughs> then what would you have said if he'd won two billion? Well, whatever. It's his money. I don't give it. Don't they said he shit. spent a billion gambling. They didn't say how much he's won. I'll bet you he's won three or four hundred million out of that. I bet that his losses weren't a billion dollars. I bet you. Right. Plus, he could still go to any golf course in the country and take money in the parking lot. Speaking of that, my boy Chandler here has agreed to play in a scramble with me local. You remember that conversation we had? Oh, fucking ringer. Do you remember that, Chandler? Maybe. We were, at, we were at Ducks at Ducks Unlimited this year, and you said, let me know, and I'll come play a scramble with you. And I'm holding you to this shit, okay? And okay. so when you're not playing and there's a scramble locally, I'm going to fucking take all these fucking rednecks' money in this deal, okay? I want you to wear fucking overalls, okay? I want you to look like a fucking big time hick, all right? <laughs> look like you just got off the tractor. Yep. As long as I don't get mugged in we'll, the parking we'll be, lot. We'll be good there. I ain't worried about that part of the deal. Jeff will be the bodyguard. Yeah, I'll take care of that. Jeff can ever. talk his way out of anything. Yeah. So, you know, you're good. We're good there. I will let them know how big of a pleasure it is for them and an experience to get their ass beat by a guy in overalls. That's what I'm going to do. Say, <laughs> so, listen, guys, it's a free lesson. You got to kick an extra hundred just for getting your ass beat. Yeah. Do you play any local tournaments still, or are you above that, But other than the one you're going to do with me? Uh, no, we'll we'll play some money games. Uh, and people still will bet you? Yeah, and I'll lose, too. Really? <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> not too long ago, we played a, we played a game – there's a little nine hole course uh, called Conroe Country Club. Probably, I don't know, thirty minutes from me, forty five minutes from me. But we, you know, there's some good, good group of guys down there. Have stupid money, and uh, we'll play like a, a three man game, like three versus three, count two balls, you know, whatever. And it gets out of hand. <laughs> he must have got his Back. ass beat bad here on this deal. Yeah, yeah. It, I'll, I'll just put it this way. I, you know, I've I've done well this year, so I can, you know, play for, you know, a good amount of money. Uh, but I damn sure wasn't planning on losing this much. <laughs> and, uh, I was, you know, everybody's got their own bets going, you know. A, like a guy that I was playing with had like five bets going. I only had like two bets going, this and that. My two bets for the day, I lost uh, sixty nine hundred. Yeah, yeah. Oof. What were the bets? It was, uh, it was a hammer game. I never even heard of a hammer game. What is that? Hammer game is like you can, uh, like you got a base. You know, let's just say a fifty dollar base. You can press it anytime when you're down. So when you press, it doubles. But so like the base starts at 50. You you play in, you hit a good drive. Guys that are in the other on the other team, they hit bad drives. You can hammer them if they accept. Now it's a hundred, and then if you like, if you birdie, it doubles. If you eagle, it triples. If you win the hole with a par, you you know you win a hundred bucks. But the presses is, is where it, you know it gets out of hand. Right. And there will be sometimes there will be you know four or five hammers on one hole. So yeah, so it it'll get out of hand. Like I mean the la the last hole the last hole I lost half of that <laughs> because I lost uh, because I missed like a six footer or five footer. <laughs> It was, it was not good. But I was on a three man team. I was the lowest amount of money lost. I'll just Ooh. put it that way. So, was the other team have a ringer, or do they just all play good and y'all and you played bad? Because I'm assuming you were the captain of the team. Yeah, no. I mean, it was it was fair bet. It was just we didn't play great, and they did play good. You know, uh, but they had a guy that's. Who is actually my old teammate. He's going to be on the corn ferry next year, Walker Lee. And then 
you get pretty much got a middleman, and then you got the last man, and they had the same thing. I mean, it was, it was very bad. It was just they were better that day. Didn't do it. <laughs> it was not a good day for us. Are they calling you to come play again now? Uh, yeah. I mean, they'll call me every now and then. <laughs> I'm like, shit. I, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll play, but we got to figure out a different game. <laughs> how long does it take you? Because there's so many different ways. It's like poker. Like, there's a million ways to play poker. Like, how long does it take you to figure out, like, like hammer game? I've never even fucking heard of that. But, like, there's got to oh, be all it, these different games that guys have, you know, different variations. How long does it take you to learn all the different shit that's going to take place at a golf course? Yeah, I mean, you you play it one time. I mean, you play it one time, and obviously you play with some guys that know how to play it. And that aren't going to fuck you, yeah. like take advantage of it. And they just teach you, hell, one round, you'll you'll have it. I mean, there's there's Hammer, there's Vegas, um, uh, there's Flip, like Quarter. Mm -hmm. you, you you can play like a let's just say a foursome or a fivesome, and you can get a quarter, and say four guys flip tails and one guy flips head it's one against four oh, shit yeah that'd, so, that'd be fun um yeah and it's it's different teams every hole obviously right, right, because right. Yeah, that's really and then, interesting and then if everybody if everybody flips the same thing well it's everybody against everybody oh right so when it's one and four or you're winning four times the money if you win that hole then yeah but if you lose <laughs> Has the money. Right, right. But that's what <laughs> Jeff, I'm saying. Jeff's a degenerate gambler, so he he only sees the positive outcome. Yeah. Right, it's only going right. to be positive here. Yeah. Right. He doesn't right. see like, yeah, but you're going to fucking lose four times the amount. I wish I was yeah. a better golfer. That'd be a fun game. It, it, there, There's there's a lot of ways, a lot of games that you can play that, you know, when you play as much as I do and, you know, if you're not just by yourself practicing, playing by yourself, and you're playing with some guys, it almost kind of gets like, okay, what are we doing out here? You know, it, it like it's kind of boring. And not boring, but it's just like, hey, let's play for something so we're actually like getting shit done. You don't, you, know? you don't have to explain to me. I understand completely what you're saying. It makes the world a lot more fun, and that's what Phil and them did. A lot of his billion dollars in gambling was him playing in Scottsdale, Arizona, or somewhere with these fancy country clubs, playing and giving guys strokes and handicaps or whatever to play him for a lot of money. Right. And Because every country club's got that rich fucker that thinks he's better than everybody that funds <laughs> all this shit. And you know what I'm talking about. Every one of them's got a guy like that out there. Right. And if you can get in his pocket, you can get in his pocket. I read a book Jimmy Buffett wrote one time, and it was a fake book. It was a, what's it called, fiction? Yeah. And it was about a guy that owned a country club in Alabama. And he made his money off gambling with people all the time. It was, a, it was an interesting book. I can't remember which book it was that he wrote, but it was an interesting character, and that's what that guy did. Took a lot of money off people playing golf. I think he won the country club playing golf. So flip it and make money on it. Uh, what is, or, or do you play, when, when you play in these terms, do you ever play just regular scrambles? No. No, it, it's always... Are you talking about like corn fairy? No, 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 no. When you play like just when you're dicking just around, dicking around, playing at the country oh. club and stuff, do you play scrambles sometimes? And no, not really. So y'all are uh, just playing best ball when y'all are playing these bets, right? And I mean, if if you got a three man team, if you're playing three and three, then you'll probably count two balls. If you want to get really stupid with the game, you can count all three balls because that. I mean, if you count everybody, then you have one guy fuck up on the hole, you get <laughs> fast, you know? What, uh, did you see the guys the other day, there's a video floating around, some guys played in a scramble, and they shot a 42. Yeah, that's a crock of shit. Yeah, and did, did you see the guy on the camera with called him out in the parking lot? He followed him out in the parking lot, and he said, here, I want everybody's picture. Don't be shy. Take your picture. Let everybody see the guys that shot 42 in a golf tournament. Well, you think they lied on they the scorecard? They fucking card? cheated like a motherfucker. I mean, 42. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's – that's what a bunch under 30 something under like yeah. well, no no i mean unless you're playing from 200 yards every hole you like, still would be hard yeah, yeah i mean that's yeah i mean so you just have to take everybody's word for it 
well, yeah. out there. I mean, that's a that's like you said, thirty under. That's one and a half strokes under on every hole. So that's yeah. you know, you'd have to make some ones, some hole in ones, which is impossible. I mean, you just it's not you have double eagle somewhere. But those guys got called out in the parking lot. But they nobody. I've there's, been in there's some, no way of proving it though, right? Fuck no, I've been in some scrambles before where you fucking tee off on your on a par five, you got OT, you put the ball on a tee and hit your second shot that way. I ain't the only motherfucker that's ever done that either. Am I Chandler? No. See? <laughs> we all been there before. But well, there I, was a video Portnoy put out. I guess they had a discrepancy on he was playing golf and it was like a four that I can't remember. I'm gonna try to find the video. I played in I used to play every year in a uh a liquor store in the Metroplex, a high end liquor store. Used to put on a big golf tournament every year at some fancy places in the Metroplex. And I used to play every year in it with the insurance guy, a friend of mine. And let me tell you something. We won a lot of money in them deals, and we won a lot of prizes and shit. But we never cheated on the scoreboard, but we probably used to tee a couple of times on a par five on the second shot, if I'm just guessing. So <laughs> the best tournament I ever played in is my high school, Wichita Falls High School used to have an alumni one every year they would do. And one of the one of the tee shots is you got to use a bat and a, ba- and a golf ball. Throw the golf ball up and hit it with your bat, and that's what you played your first shot at. Well, yeah, if, wherever that, that they do that a bunch and like yeah. scrambles, like you or or the or you can pay twenty bucks or something like that, and you can hit your drive, and then wherever you hit it from, yeah, that's that's where you're hitting yeah, your Tony first. Tony could shot hit from. a fucking baseball, a golf ball with a baseball bat about four hundred fucking yards. It seemed like so on a par five, he would do that and shit. We're fucking almost putting every time. But it was so many damn different things. But they also let you have a – you got to shoot skeet. You got to shoot four times at trap or skeet. And for every one of those shots, you got a, a stroke off your score. Well, fuck, there was four of us, and you got to do that twice. Fuck, that's minus 12 to 15 every time we'd play just on that. But it was a fun deal because it incorporated a lot of shit. And it wasn't a money. You wasn't going to win any money. It was, it was all for a fundraiser, but it was a really good time. Right. Yeah. So you're – you know, when did you get the news that you're you're going on the tour? Uh, Sunday. Sunday. Two days ago. Yeah. And how does that happen? Like, they call you up or you get an email? What happens? No, they, I mean, so we got a point system. And, uh, you know, you, you kind of know what it's going to take. Like, how many points it's going to take to, like, secure your car. Mm-hmm. I pretty much had it locked already but you know they just some crazy shit can happen and is they just wait until they know for sure like okay you can't get past you can't get past by the last guy that's gonna get his car so that and that finishing seventh last week um just completely secured it so so you knew going into the weekend that Decent round of golf, you got it. Yeah, I mean, decent, not decent. I, I was, I was good. Like I was, I, I felt good about it. Like I was, I, I wasn't worried about that. I was just really trying to win a golf tournament, and I played like ass the last day. You did? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, actually, no, I didn't. It was just a hard ass golf course. It was. Ohio State's uh, uh, home course, and I'm gonna tell you right now, dude, that you fake anything around there, that ain't happening. Really? You, you, yeah. I mean, you have to do everything really good, and if you don't, you're not gonna play good. I mean, I shot. I went five under, one over, two under three over what so you still made a paycheck yeah 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 i'm playing i made some money <laughs> what what did the winner the winner paid two hundred thousand on that didn't it 270 Ooh, what but you got fifth didn't you seven 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 what it pay 43 that's still a damn good that's, that's better than fucking frying burritos at all so i can tell you that much right now I, i'm not complaining at all <laughs> ain't, ain't mad at it <clears throat> what um uh, um, how much, cause I saw a video, an uh, NFL player posted like his paycheck <clears throat> and then like, who was it? Uh, Eric Armstead. What was his paycheck? 
Uh, so before all the shit got taken out of it, it was three sixty. Three hundred sixty thousand for yeah. the week or ten days. And then after everything was taken out of it, he was down to like one seventy five. So does 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 golf do something similar to where like you might have won forty three or whatever, but the bring home is actually like thirty two? Uh I mean it's just taxes. That that's the only thing that's coming out of that. Federal for, and state? From, or just state? I just I, I think it's just state. Yeah, you're your yeah. contract labor basically. You do your own tax you, you take out and fuck the government. They're gonna give all that shit to Ukraine anyways. There you go. Yeah. yeah exactly. It's yeah. it's a joke. It's fucking stupid as shit. I'm telling you right now, if we as citizens don't stop this shit going on, it's crazy. I mean that motherfucker just going in and asking for twenty billion dollars like he's asking fucking for an ice cream soda or some shit. And they just <laughs> bend over fucking backwards to him, sell out bastards. Forty three thousand dollars a good way. So he 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 brung home half of what he made. Basically, yeah. But he had agents. He had you know a whole bunch of shit that just kind of gets taken right off the top. Can you imagine though? He's getting ten of those checks a season, right? Because I think they get a check every ten days or something. I don't know. So his bring home is still one point seven million dollars. Oh. One hundred seventy I mean, thousand yeah. times ten. That's one point seven. That'd be awesome. I don't. I don't feel bad for the guy, but it was just. When you see it started out at 360 and now it's 180, whatever it was. Does it was he think people were going to feel sorry for him for that, though? No, no, no. And that's what he said before. He said there's just a lot of questions about how we get paid as NFL people and what paychecks look like. And he said, I'm not flexing on anybody. This is just what it is. I, I appreciate that part, but I didn't know if he was wanting, if he was like bitching and was like, can you believe I have to pay this much? No, 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 no. But I think the rich people are very overtaxed. And I think he's overtaxed. I don't think the government deserves half his fucking money. I don't. Right. Just like I don't think the government deserves to make more money off of a gallon of gas than Shell Oil Company does. It puts all the money into it to making it. It's kind of like you're saying about the rich girl and the fucking old man that owns a yacht. You know, old man works his ass off to buy a yacht. Some chick gets fake tits in the thong and she gets on his boat and fucking next thing you know, she owns half that motherfucker. Well, she did have to work the Instagram <laughs> algorithm to, well, to I, her I, favor. I, so, I, you I know, I'm not it. saying that she didn't put any work into it. She, she did put her... Name out there on Instagram. So Chandler is the eye candy and the uh, the posers at the go at the corn ferry different than the PGA tour. I have no idea. You don't see all the hot chicks falling around golfers all the time because the best looking no. women are the, the best looking women are at a fucking PGA event running around trying to find a golfer. Yeah, I don't. I haven't seen any. I'm, hell, man, I'm just I'm I'm trying to concentrate. I, I can honestly say I'm more concentrated on golf than looking around for some girl. <laughs> I bet John Daly's looking at titties while he's playing golf. He might be. Probably. I promise you, he is. You think so? Fuck yeah, and, he is. And, and if he doesn't see any, he's gonna head to Hooters <laughs> after. Yeah. John K John Daly is not an expensive drunk or someone. He's not hanging out at the Ritz. He's hanging out at the regular fucking hired Johnsons with all the regular poor people and enjoying his life that way. I think. Have you? What about going to Europe or playing in the Saudis over there? Have you thought about going over there where they give the guaranteed money, or do you have to get the? Is that a hard invite to get? Uh, yeah, I think that's that's like a invite, but that's kind of like what I was talking about with the designated events on the PGA Tour. That's that's guaranteed money. Like, I mean, you show up, you play four days, you're going to guarantee you can get last place. And I think it's 50, 40, 40 grand guaranteed. Is that if you make the cut and play Saturday and Sunday, or is that just for showing up? No, but that's the thing. is The designated events is a pretty much invite only. There's no cut, and okay. there's only like. It's only like 70 guys. And that's what you've got to try out to get into each week, but you can play in the regular PGA events at any time, right? Right. What? Right. Okay. At the Byron, is the Byron Nelson, they still do the Byron Nelson? Yes, sir. What does it, what, how much does it cost to enter one of those? Anything? For me? Yes. Oh, yeah, no. It's, it, one, it, it's the same thing as like the Corn Ferry. If you're in, like if, like I will be in the Byron Nelson this this coming season. All I gotta pay, like my all I gotta pay for to play in the tournament is like locker fee for the week, and it's nothing. It's like seventy five bucks. Right. 
but that's that's for them like you know you can leave your shoes they'll clean your shoes this and that blah 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 that it's just it's pretty much a tip for the guys in the locker room and i mean shout out to them they <laughs> they take care of you you know right. and you tip on top of that oh jeff it's- yeah i mean oh. yeah if if you if you see them and they bring you your shoes and everything like that i mean Give him a couple bucks. Yeah. Tight ass Andy yeah. over here. Why'd you say no Listen, for? Listen, Jeff, I've already paid my seventy five dollar no. fee. <laughs> I know. I know that from pro baseball players that the equipment, the, the guys that work in the um, clubhouse managers, what they call them, they would always tip them. An ex pro baseball player told me, and he talked about some of the fucking guys that made a lot of money were tight fucks and didn't give any money. But he said, like when I would leave, I would always leave anywhere from two to five hundred dollars in my locker for the guys, and they would split it up. He said, you know, there's twenty five guys on our team. And he said, if everybody does that, those guys are making anywhere from three to seven, eight thousand dollars, and they split it up between the two, three, four guys that are working in there a little bit, and whoever else they want to give some money to, and they split it up. And he said it used to wear me out to play with a guy that was making ten million a year, and he wouldn't leave a fucking dime for him. Motherfucker, that's the job I need. You play a lot of baseball games. Yeah, they play eighty-two yeah. home games or eighty-one home games Fuck, a year. Yeah, and they're making good. Well, but you got to. They're, they're they're making probably the the clubhouse manager probably's making. Sure, we can probably get the Ranger clubhouse manager on here. Fuck, I'd work for just the tips. Well, that's they're probably making eighty to hundred thousand a year in tips, not counting their price salaries. Probably close to that too. God Almighty, I'm in the wrong business. This is not near as lucrative as you want to watch. You, you want to watch jock straps? Fuck for that for two hundred grand. Okay, I'll, I'll fucking follow Chandler around and wash his shoes. There you go. <laughs> Fuck me, I'm in the wrong line of business here. But, what? But yeah, fuck. I, I gave my seventy five bucks. You're good. Yeah, Andy's a top. But fucker. you do want people to like take care of you when you're there, though. So like they remember right. that shit. You don't want to get secondhand service. Have you been to Augusta yet? No, sir. I have. I didn't get a play though. I got ran out of the parking lot, but I was there. I can say I've been there. Jeff tried to sneak on the course. They wouldn't let him. Yeah. Told him turn around. You're good. You're good <laughs> here, sir. This is all you're gonna see. I'm a good bullshitter, but I could not bullshit through that gate. <laughs> you're good. Yeah, there's a there's a nat- there's a U turn right up ahead. That's yeah. where you're gonna. That's, don't miss your exit. There there was. I think you could probably do that at any other golf course in the world, and you'd be, probably be able to talk your way into it. That course ain't happening. No. I've bullshitted <laughs> my way into all kinds of places, from national parks to museums to top secret places to Canada one time through the border deal. But I tried that at the at Augusta, uh, sir. You need to pull right over there. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I was going to just come pull a gate. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I screwed up. Went all the way into the gate thinking I'd get around. They sent me back around. Nope. And then I got in a damn traffic jam trying to get out because some bitch was arguing with some other guy about some shit. She's probably doing the same shit you were doing. No, her. she was waiting on her husband to work there. He was a weed eater there. Oh. She was waiting on him, and he, they were arguing about shit. I'm like, listen, if they're not going to let me see the fucking course, and go. Yeah. And Augusta is not a nice town. I thought it would be. We stopped and had din- had lunch there. We went to uh, we were in upstate New York, and there's a place called the Mohonk Mountain Lodge. It's one of the coolest places I've ever seen the pictures of. So me and Michelle drove by there, and I said, "I want to I want to see this place. I'm going to look." I said, "You know what? We'll go to the bar and have a drink. It's a fucking big, nice resort and hotel. You figure you can drive up, go in the park lot, walk inside, and have a drink." So we pull into these gates, and there wasn't nobody there, and they were inside. And I started to just wave and drive and just drive on through like I own the motherfucker, like I normally would do, but I didn't. I was trying to be. So a lady rolled in. She come up to me. Yes, sir. Do you have an appointment here? I said, no. I said, um, our daughter's getting married. We don't even have a daughter. And I said, I'm looking at uh, venues for we're going to do a wedding at, and we just wanted to see your deals. Oh, do you have an appointment with the wedding planner? No. Well, he didn't see that one coming. I was like, no, no, yeah. man, we don't. I said, we just, we just want to take a look at it and stuff. And I said, we'll probably go to the bar and maybe order dinner and have a drink or something while we're here. Uh, do you have reservations for the dinner? Didn't see like, that one coming no. either, did you? I said, can we not just have a beer in your place? Uh, no, sir, not unless you have an appointment here and you go through, you had to fill out some paperwork. Fuck this pretentious motherfucker. We're not having our daughter get married at a place like this. I turned around and drove off. They wouldn't even let me through the door. I was like, shit. Oh, so, for two on trying to sneak yeah. on the golf courses. Didn't work very well for me, but I got, you don't know if you don't try. Yeah, I mean, fuck it. What are you going to do? So, what's your next big, what's the first PGA event you play next January or February? Yeah. Uh, Is that in Phoenix or Las Vegas? Hawaii. Ooh, that'd even be better. Well, you better watch them yeah. fuckers, though. Yeah, that's the second week, I think. But I got, you know, I got one more Corn Ferry event next week. So the last one of the year in uh, Evansville. 
Indiana. When did the when does the corn ferry start up? Did it start up in January like the PGA Tour does? Oh, so you yeah. used so it's not any extra events or anything like that. No, no, it's about the same events. I mean, I played uh 23 that that next week will be 23 events f- since january so what's that one that's one every other week basically no less than that well no you're playing what january to september or october first week of october yeah, yeah. so not one every other week what uh yeah. what's the what's the travel going to be like now that you're on the tour is it still kind of like you're doing now yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll, the, the only thing that I won't have that's going to be different is I'll be getting a – I won't have to do a rental car because they have courtesy cars at PGA Tour events. So now you just have to do a rental wherever you fly into? No, I don't I don't have to do that. Oh, well, yeah, yes, right fair. now. Right, yeah, right now, I, yeah, I got to get a rental every week. Hell, last week I had a freaking Kia Soul. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> Like, and, I, and like I, I was playing good, you know. I was I was tied for the lead going into the last day, and you know, the Corn Ferry media people, they're you know they're awesome. They're you know trying to get videos and of me like walking from the parking lot and this and that. And I pull into the place. And they're like, hey, we're gonna get you like getting out of the car and this and that. I said, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. You can get me walking, like, and, and I, like I'm I'm good friends with them, you know. I've hung out with them a pretty good bit this year, and I was like, you can get me after I get out of the car, away from the car, so you can't tell what I just got out of. Like, I I have a freaking Ford F two fifty at home that I drive every day. Like, I mean, it that is my type of truck. I don't drive a car, guy. and I damn sure don't draw. I, I damn sure don't drive a damn box car. Like, I mean, it was. That's a shit. I was like, whatever you do, just don't get the key of soul. In it. <laughs> it's like driving a four wheeler. We yeah. We, we went to yeah. Sask- I mean, We went to Saskatchewan hunting one time, and my buddy Steve Barber don't want to say his name or nothing. <clears throat> tight fucker rented an SUV for us. I've got us an SUV rented when we get to the airport. Good. So we go in. We go through all the fucking go through customs and all that bullshit in Canada. We get done over there, and he goes, I'm going to go get the car now. I said, okay, and me and another buddy are sitting over there, and he goes, hey, Jeff, I need you to come up here. I'm going to have you drive anyways. I said, okay, so I go up there. And we get, He gives me the keys and shit, and I don't even look at the keys. We start, He said, we're number 18. So we're 14, 15, 16, 17. I go, Steve, I thought you got this SUV. I did. I go, this is a fucking Kia Soul. This is not an SUV. Three grown men and all our hunting equipment for five days in there. That motherfucker, you, you couldn't even see out of this. Steve had said on the back passenger, he couldn't even see. We had shit stacked up so high he couldn't see out the other side window. It's terrible. I was telling my buddy when we were driving, I was like, I ain't getting on the highway on this thing. <laughs> like, I mean, you wreck, you're yep. done. Like, I mean, it's. Yeah, that's it. I was like, ah. Screw that, it's a, man. They're pieces that, of shit. I, I don't even know how they like pass any of their safety shit because you're right. Like you get you get hit by a fucking bicycle, you're fucking you're the one taking the damage on it. You'd 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 be surprised. I saw uh, one of those science shows, one of those doing science, yeah. and they wrecked a 1972 Impala or something that weighed fifteen thousand fucking pounds. It's fifty five miles an hour. And it fucking killed everybody inside. The Kia Soul at 75 miles an hour has got airbags that shoot out everywhere from your asshole to your fucking cheekbones. Safety. Sa- a lot safer. But I'm the same as you. I think that you're going to get crunched. You just get crumbled Like up. those little Lee car deals, those little, some of them little fucking energy green cars. If I can just pick them up and carry them and set them in your office with you in your suitcase and shit. Fucking tiny as hell. And you see- Yeah. All right. No. So you'll have a driver no, everywhere on tour. Pick you up. Not not a not a driver, but like it like the courtesy car. It's pretty much a rental car, but I don't have to pay pay for it. Pay for it. They they'll like have it for me and everything like that. Because like the tours, like some tournaments are sponsored by BMW and some most of them are uh, a Lexus. So I'll have you know some type of 
a Lexus or BMW or something like I that. I know John Daly, they got a driver for him. You might you might not you might not be a Ford you might not be an F two fifty guy after you start driving around in some of these uh BMWs. No, nah, hell no. I you know always a Ford I, guy? And I've driven SUV like little SUVs and stuff like that. No. Not happening. Yeah. Truck. I need a truck. Like I I hate cars and little SUVs and stuff like that. I just, it ain't I like me. being <laughs> able to see when I'm driving my wife for a long time. Like when we were in college, you know, she, you know, we're broke, but I've always had a pickup truck because of my job. But you know, she, she was a girl. So she had that little car and starter car. And like, I remember driving it and it's like, I can't fucking see anything in this. I can't see what is happening in front of me. So, like, now right, she's got right. a, an expedition, but, like, for a long time, it was just a fucking car, and I'm like, I hate this. I hate getting in traffic, because I like to maneuver, and I like to see what's going on. Yeah. Can't do it in a fucking car. Well, in New York, you fucked yeah. me on that deal, too, <clears throat> because I was supposed to have the SUV. Jeff, I had kids. And so Andy somehow ended up with the SUV, and I ended up with a fucking Impala. And I was like, so we got to the airport. I'm like, how the fuck did this happen here? And I was like, you know, I'll take that one. Andy. Oh, we're good over here. I thought, you motherfucker, of course you are. And they had the fucking SUV. Well, we're going to Massachusetts. We're going to Cape in a couple of weeks. And I rented a Grand Wagoneer. I've always wanted to drive one. G-Wagon? The, the big one. Well, you are a pretentious bastard. I, that's what I want. I'd like to have just one. Just Trade in our Tahoe for that. Okay. I like them. So anyways, I'm, I rented one just to see what it's like. So this is going to be your test drive? Yep. You're going like to have a fucking G-Wagon in Knox City? Yeah, if 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 I like it, I'm going to. What a douche! Why? They're nice, look, good looking vehicles. <laughs> Just a douchebag. Why? Yeah, yeah. Your wife drives a fucking expedition. What's the yeah, difference? Yeah, working uh, a fucking working man's SUV. Huh? That's right. Yeah, whatever. Blue collar. Yeah, that that's you. It's all we could afford. 100%. So most of these guys on the on the on the PGA tour. Like you're gonna get too big that you won't come on our podcast before long because I know how this shit goes. Better hope the hunting. Better hope the hunting stays good. You're gonna be a PGA <laughs> guy here before long, so you'll be in a private jet flying everywhere like all the other guys are doing. My advice is befriend one of them guys so you can fly along in his private jet all the time. Yeah, that'd be real nice. But because I can right now, uh, 23 events this year, I drove to. Two, three of them. Uh, so 20, 20 events flying, going through airports. Shit, you can have that do, at any ass. Do you fly first class, or will you now that you're on the PGA? Do you get to fly first class all the time? No, I man, look, I was broke all my life. Well, I was. My my parents weren't but they damn sure acted like it <laughs> uh, so it, it rubbed off on me pretty bad and i don't i'm give me the cheapest flight cheapest hotel the only thing i won't do is i'm not flying spirit <laughs> but that's a lie <laughs> yeah i'll uh but i mean cheapest flight cheapest hotel like fuck put me up in a red roof in i don't give a damn you know i mean if it if it's got hot water i'm i'm good Hot water and no bed bugs. Yeah. Hey, have the, you ever? Ran, yeah, I mean, have you ever ran across bed bugs? Not yet. No, <laughs> no. But I mean, we like when we, me and my dad, we we go to Wichita Falls every year dove hunting, and for oh shit, uh, he's been going up there for the past. 20 or 21 years i've been going probably the last 15 16 years until this year we've stayed at the red roof inn Oof. in uh, falls mm, that's brave man right there yeah yeah it was hey what no bed bugs and hot water i don't i don't care it's like 41 dollars a night <laughs> and the thing is it's worth three dollars a night Where's that at in Wichita Falls? Up on Shepherd Access, over by the uh, over by the base. So on the north side of town. Yeah, it's not a. It's as a kid that grew up in Wichita Falls, I can tell you, I'd never even been to a shitty party at the Red Roof Inn growing up. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not hunting with Rustin and them if y'all been going that long. Y'all just hunting on some friends' place. Yeah. So my my dad's buddy he uh, he has some family land, uh -huh. and uh, it's not a bunch. It's 
probably right at about a thousand acres, but the farmers up there that have been farming land for however freaking long, I don't know, like a long ass time, uh, they farm everything from Wichita Falls to Vernon to Burke Burnett, you know, all that, like everything in that kind of triangle right there. And we, uh, we'd always go up there and just kind of go through them. And, you know, if, Hey, is this, you know, do y'all farm this field? Like you can just drop them a pen. Oh yeah. Oh, so-and-so owns it. You know, all right. Can we hunt it? Yeah. How about it? There's a lot of good we, dove hunting up there. I got a buddy of mine. Rustin's got a, he runs a really good operation. The dove King of Texas. How'd y'all do this year? Did okay. The past few years have been not great just because, uh, like six years ago, five years ago, uh, you know, muddy water, dry creek, uh, red dirt, like all, all three of those outfitters, they kind of came in before, before that. Fuck, man. Fucking Argentina. Yeah. Like, it was it was ridiculous but now we kind of get bottom of the barrel because they have all the fields leased out and everything like that and we you know we can get lucky and be able to because it's not a bunch of us either it's you know it's usually like like this year is only four of us right. so we didn't we didn't need a field that has five eight thousand in it i mean you, you just give us enough where we can shoot a limit every day like that's I mean, it's good enough. Yeah. And with how dry it's been, my buddy's or my dad's buddy's family land has a pond, uh, two ponds on it, or two tanks, and it was corn, wheat, and I think Milo all in like a thousand acres. So I mean, there there were some doves there, and we I mean we did we did well, and I. Shit, I, the farmer that I've gotten to know here, right outside of town, there was a field out here. Me and my dad, we we went to Wichita Falls. I came back. He rode with me, and I was like, "Hey, like, I'm gonna go look at this field. If they're in there, like they were the other day, you know, I mean, just fuck them up, you know." Uh, it was right in the afternoon. <laughs> we drove, you know, three and a half, four hours back. Pull up. There's a freaking high line right there, right on the road, and there's a Milo field, and there was probably 60 or 70 doves on it. I was like, well, shit, if there's 60 or 70 on the damn high line, there's who knows how many is there out there. We fucking shot the shit out of them. Yeah. We, shot, we shot our limit, finished. I brought him home. He called me the next day. He was like, hey, let's go fuck him up again. <laughs> I'm like, right, let's go. Like, come on. Like, let's do so, it. Yeah, so we, I mean, we we had we had a good, you know, six days of hunting. It was it was good. Now you're a good shot, from what I've heard from everybody. How for you to get fifteen dove? How many how many shells are we shooting? Mm. Box and a quarter, box and a half. Thirty five shells. What about you, Andy? Uh, Something like that. that. He's taking one for two. He's two for one. That's probably what I shoot. You're <coughs> fucking high. How on, much? Are you sure that good, CBD doesn't? Have, you sure you're not taking THC? You're fucking. If <laughs> I'm high. truly sitting there dove hunting, I, I'm going to shoot a bird for every two Fuck. shells. Fuck. You know damn well I can too. No. Yes. I'm one and a quarter. Huh? Well, yeah, one for, I'm one for four. That's yeah. Four for one. You're going to shoot three <laughs> boxes of shells to shoot your 15 birds, probably. Probably. Yeah. You know. uh Y'all shot some doves too, we, though. Didn't yeah, we? we've had. It's been okay. Out, out of a scale of one to ten, our season's about a five this year, I'd say. But we're rebooked about a hundred percent of everybody that was here, so I consider that a great year. I mean, from yeah. business wise, it was a great year, and it still is. We got big. We got a gold star dove hunt this weekend, and then we've got two big corporate groups still to go. It's mean, just been a weird year because it's been so hot. So a lot of our grain fields that we thought were going to be really good, like the the birds just aren't really eating that much because they don't have right. to. I mean, they're more focused kind of on water and, and stuff like that. So, like, we've had several cornfields and some, you know, some other shit. But we've got the food. It, it was crazy. It was crazy this year. Like, we, we hunted. It was a, it was a cornfield and no, no shit. Like, in the morning, we would 
we would go and um you could you could see the doves and it was like a i think it was somewhat of a full moon those fuckers were eating at night oh. they were in the field I- they were in the field like we, like there's there's trees behind us okay we're on the fence line i'm thinking like okay they're going to be coming out of these trees. They're just, you know, roosting and everything like that. They're going to be coming out in this cornfield. You get this cornfield. That way, there's not a fucking tree within three miles. Like, it is just open. And uh, them fuckers were coming from the field. Yeah. Like, right at daylight. I'm like, okay, I know, you can hear them. Mm-hmm. It, when they come flying by you or whatever, and you don't see them before you – if you don't, if you hear them before you don't see them, like you can do that. And I'm looking over here and now I hear like, you know, the wing beat and everything. I look up, there's fucking three of them coming from the field. And now I started looking out there and I could see them like getting up out of the, the field. field. That's that daylight. Yeah. Andy, how many times that, have you noticed them in the cotton though when you're goose hunting? Thou- hundreds of doves. Right. Well, and they stay all night on the ground. A lot of the guys, some of the guys that we had this weekend that were doing better, like they were doing it in the last 30 minutes. So like they were coming out of the trees to the feed field in the last 30 minutes. So I'm I'm sure that's just, they're just going out there. It's too fucking hot out there. It was 110, wasn't it, this weekend? Yeah, we saw birds huddled under the shade. I mean, they were clumped together in the shade. Little bitty shrub bushes and there's birds just congregated in, in whatever shade they could get. It's just... It's just been a weird year with how hot and dry things are. We never, in 30 years, we've been in dove hunts for about 25 years. In 25 years of dove hunting, I don't remember ever us hunting the water as much as we have this this dove season compared to usually we have feed fields that we're hunting. Right. It's got like, but a lot of it has to hadn't cooled off. The morning's at 65 degrees in the morning. I mean, it hasn't cooled yeah. off yet. It's hot. It's 90 degrees again. But we'll have a north. What's crazy is, is we've lost birds to a north wind, and it's still 98 degrees or 100 degrees. We've had, we've, right. it's been a very trying dove season getting on the birds because we've got so many places with food for birds that shredded, ready to go. And you go out there and there's food everywhere. It's just been, we haven't had any fronts to keep pushing new birds down. And the city birds right. have been the savior for a lot of us. Yeah. Cause if you're around a big city, yeah. the, the birds stay in the city and those, the birds don't leave much. And we, no. and we haven't shot that, as many white wings this year as we did last year either. Mm-hmm. But like I said, that, business is good. Like, so. That's like Wichita Falls. I mean, Burke, Burke Burnett, Isle Park, Electra, Vernon. If you got a field, Milo Field, you know, a, a shredded cornfield or something like that, I talking about years past. If you got one within a mile and a half from that, any of those little towns, shit, you can count it. Just get ready, you know. If you can hunt it, and the outfitters ain't got it leased right. out, but but it's been, it's been a weird year. But you know, I mean, it, it is what it is at this point. That's what <clears throat> that's the good thing about it. We got a lodge, so like even if the hunting isn't, if you're not fucking melting your barrel, you know, every time you go out there, you're gonna come back here. You got lodging. You're gonna get a steak dinner on Saturday night. So I mean, right. we we can make up for it in different ways rather than the guys that like. If you're staying at a hotel and you're hunting shitty, well, it's like you've had nothing. You're just at a hotel. So at least you can come out here and get a little bit of customer service and, you know, listen to some BS or whatever. But overall, business-wise, it's been good. Hunting's been a little bit slow for the duff season. And teal hunting, we had, like, it's just so fucking hot. Like, normally we'll have three weeks of teal hunting, but there's no teal here. We had a good opening weekend and it's been kind of hit or miss ever since then. See, see, that's what's crazy is like, I, you know, I've got a lot of, you know, friends that hunt, like teal hunt. I ain't give a damn about yeah. teal. Like, especially when it's 85 degrees outside, you know, in the mornings. Screw that. Plus, snakes, <laughs> gators. No, I ain't. They can have it. But down here, like the you know my home, my hometown Huntsville got the Trinity River over there. I know some guys that fuck they've been going every weekend really? shooting the shit. Yeah, I don't know where, but shooting the shit out of them. And then uh, y'all ever heard of Moody Ranch? Yes, yeah. At Navasota, 
my buddy's uncle owns that place. They've been shooting the shit out of them. And I'm just like, fuck everybody. I don't know. I don't know what pushed these damn teal down, but like, it's still fucking hot. Like, and it's not even getting cool like north. Like, I mean, hell, last week I was in Ohio and it got to 89. Mm hmm. Like, I mean, it's... They'll go, like, any sort of north wind. They feel that north wind hit their tail feathers, and they're fucking booking it. Because they got to go all the way to Central America. The the best teal hunting in the United <laughs> States for an early teal hunt, and there are places that are going to be really good, and people are going to be like, well, we shoot the shit out of them, is going to be somewhere along the Texas coast and, and southern Louisiana to consistently shoot a shitload of teal every day, and they shoot a ton of hunters... Those areas down there hold so many teal because so many of the blue winged teal are gone. I mean, they're, they're by October first or ninety percent probably, the, and that's my favorite ninety percent. But a big portion of the blue winged teal are going to be in South America and Central America here pretty quick in Mexico. They don't, right. you know, they don't like cold weather at all. They're gone, and so yeah. if you don't get them quick, you're not going to get them at all. I don't understand why we don't open teal season up September first and close it October fifteenth. It ain't gonna, it ain't gonna hurt the the numbers majority right. of them never get and, shot at or hunted anyways. Yeah. And I mean, hell, when they go, when they get to Mexico, hell, there's no limit on them down there. No, there's there? not very many people hunt them. Yeah. I mean, the, the, that's kind of like Canada. People bitch. Cause it's an eight bird limit in Canada. Well, they get to shoot eight birds up there. Yeah. But if you take the overall number of birds up there and the people that are hunting them, it's not a very big portion. It's not like in the, in America, yeah. when you go to Mexico, it's even a whole lot worse. I mean, I mean, there's very few people in Mexico that hunt. Because I bet the only, I bet the big portion of people that hunt in Mexico are Americans that are down there for a weekend. Yeah, or or, or yeah. cartel Uber cartel people or Uber Mexican wealthy people nationals. Right. You're right. It's not your average Joe in Mexico doesn't work at a battery or tire store like you do in America and then get up and go hunting on a weekend. Right. There's not right. there's not much of that going on. That's why I don't believe that the passenger pigeon deal. I don't buy that shit about we shot all of them. You're gonna stick with that. Yes, I'm going he's, to. he's coming back on. I just talked to him. Good. I don't. I don't buy that. There's no way in the United States of America in 1910 there was enough people hunting to wipe them all out. Have you heard about the passenger pigeon, Chandler? Passenger mm -mm. pigeon. I think at one time I'll Google it real quick. I think they were in the billions. Three point right? two billion or something. I mean, it was a bunch of birds. And then within the course of a couple decades, there are probably about a hundred years. There were they're extinct now. There's zero of them. Left and, and the so thing they went from three point. I'll look it up. But you go to the. We'll take West Texas where I'm at for example. Let's say that back in the day we had a hundred thousand passenger pigeons in our county. Right. People didn't hunt for sport back then. They hunted for food. Right. You wasn't going to shoot out that many of them. There were three to five billion passenger pigeons at the time Europeans discovered America. So late or seventeen hundred basically. And then let me figure out whenever they went extinct. But people were, people shot the, they were uh, hat ornaments. So people would shoot a passenger pigeon. Plus people were hungry. So you had to, you were eating passenger pigeons, but a lot of people would put their, their pigeon, they'd have it taxidermied and they'd put it on a hat. Um, we ain't killing 3.2 billion of them motherfuckers. I'm telling you, some disease wiped them out. Had to have. We, we ain't making that many hats. Uh, that. <laughs> well, people will put a bunch of them you on could, there. You could send every passenger pigeon to southern Louisiana and tell them coon asses they're illegal and they taste great, and they still couldn't kill all of them. There's right. no way. Let me see what year they went extinct. When did the passenger pigeon go extinct? The survey says Na 1912. 1914. I was off by two years. But I just so, don't, I don't believe at that time that we – I just don't believe that. I think something else happened. I really do. I think there had to have some kind of disease – I mean, we didn't wipe out the canvas backs. Came close. I don't. Well, we did, but I mean, we still didn't do it to to wipe them out completely. I just hell fucking whooping cranes even survived. And you said you're not seeing any decline in your pig population down there with the drought. Everywhere. <sighs> not that I've seen. Like <laughs> it's. I, I mean, I think I think here where I've been, you know, going the past few times. I think it's just because they have the river. Right. Like every one of them, every one of them that we shoot, they're freaking covered in like mud and everything. So all they're doing all day is just sitting in the river and then they got plowed up cornfields 150 yards from yeah. it. Like, 
What's the furthest north state that you've seen pigs in? Because I've heard they're like making their way. Are they in Kansas now? Missouri and Kansas has them because Kansas has done some really weird things to try to get rid of them. But yeah, I think the the very I, I've I've heard. I don't know. I haven't seen it, but I've heard that like the very southeast uh, corner of Kansas is getting yeah, them. They do have them there. I know. And they have them in Missouri. Yeah. I think you're going to make a line along the Mason Dixon line. Probably is going to be pretty close. And and the problem, I, I'm not a biologist by any means, but I think the cold weather keeps them from breeding as much. Has to be. Because yeah, we we shot one last night. Holy shit! Let me hold on. Because I think down here, I think they breed three times a year. Is what I've heard. Yeah, they're like Democrats. And then they, they reach sexual maturity at like six or nine months. So you don't have to have very many pigs I, on the. I, I mean, I'm I'm 155 yeah. pounds. Five, eight, five, nine. This one was pregnant last mm -hmm. night. And I don't know if y'all can see Holy it. Holy shit. Yeah. 325. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It was... We we snuck up and there was I think there was probably six or seven of them in this group and we we were like hey we we got to kill that big one that that one's fucking huge so we uh we all ganged up on that one and just started I mean finally got her down and then started trying to pick off the other ones end up killing four out of the group but yeah I I think that one was probably three to maybe just over three somewhere around we there. had a uh we had a one farm that we used to hunt all the time it had a little peninsula of trees on it and there was a family group of pigs in it and it was a sow and her first litter which were at this time probably 80 pounds and then some of them right. had their own first litter and she had little ones so it, it turned out to be like 12 pigs turned into 40 pigs pretty fast and right. that's where people don't realize is, is they start having babies real fast again. So it's just a quick process. It don't take them long to turn over. The drought has, has no. hurt our pig population more than anything. It's only yeah. thing. So like la the first time we went out here, like two and a half weeks ago, we, uh, we went and checked this field and there, there's, there's a, a sliver of woods between the the fields and the river and that sliver of woods is probably from where the woods start to the edge of the river i think i've did it on onyx is probably 150 yards so i mean a good good patch of woods you know and uh we were we were driving on the road and we stopped because i think there was like a coyote out out in the field we were going to try to shoot it or whatever and when we stopped wearing a little golf cart, just trying to be quiet and everything, and uh, we heard them, and it sounded like a, like a bunch of them, and we heard them like squealing and stuff. And I'm like, hey, let's get the hell out of here. We'll go look as far away from here as we can, and we'll come back to this field. Maybe they'll come back out in this field because it was like a fresh, like plowed up cornfield. They had just. Um, they just uh, harvested it and then shredded it and then, you know, plowed it up. So there's still a bunch of corn on the ground. So we go, we go and, you know, hunt a little bit, shoot a group, and we come back to that field. And I'm not shitting you. There was, uh, I mean, I, I got a video of it. There's, there's probably 60, 70, 80, somewhere around there, just in one field. Like, it was, it was unbelievable. Like, I, it's the most pigs I've ever seen in, like, a field, like, one by itself. Back, and, like, and some big ones, too. Like, we killed, the first night we went, <clears throat> two weeks, two and a half weeks ago, we killed 15, and I think five of them, I think five of them were over probably 225. We don't we don't kill the big pigs like we used to here. Now, back 20, 25 years ago, it was not unusual to see anywhere from 100 to 200 pigs in a group. I mean, it was really in right. this big wheat field. You'd see them. 
But the, there wasn't helicopter hog hunting then, and there wasn't there was no thermals. So you either hunted them during the daytime or at nighttime with a spotlight. We had to get close to them. They're not they're very smart animals. If they could see, right. that would be they'd be hard to kill if they could see worth the shit. But we used to kill a pig that would weigh anything. If you sh- if you come in on a pig and you say I shot a pig over three hundred pounds, it wasn't that unusual. Now it's getting to be more unusual. You think they don't live long right. enough to get that big? I I don't or do you know. You think the resources? I don't know. We just but. The biggest pig we ever killed weighed 408 pounds, and that was with its head cut off. So it was a 450, 60 pound pig, probably. It's a big old pig. Full, full, full size pickup. You, you you had to push the tailgate to get its ass up. It went from the back of the cab all the way on a full size pickup. I mean, it was huge. You just don't see big pigs like that no more, hardly up here like you used to. And I don't know if it's the food. I don't know if it's the competition. I don't know if it's the night hunting. I don't. I don't know if we shoot so many pigs at 200 pounds. Plus, there's a lot more popular than it used to be. Back then, there wasn't that many people shooting pigs. Right, right. I think I think that's got a lot to do with it, <clears throat> especially down here. Like, I think the <clears throat> the biggest pig I've heard of down here was one just over 400, but they caught it with dogs. Yeah, but I mean, other than that. Maybe like a three forty or something like that, but that I mean we, I caught one with some buddies of mine that was we put it on the scale and I think it was like three fifteen, but it was he was cut like it was or hog that had been cut and he just got fat and lazy, you know. I want to I want to see I can't wait till the first time I start hearing about people starting to shoot warthogs because it's coming. Because there's, there's a refuge down and around, or not a refuge, well, I guess it is a refuge. Somewhere down north of Brownsville, there's a refuge that they've gotten out, and they're seeing them now in the wild moving around that way. They'll make their way up this way eventually. I don't know if I'd want to shoot Maybe. one. You wouldn't shoot one? Yeah. <clears throat> I would. That'd be cool to get mounted. You would? Yeah, hell yeah. I don't give a... I ain't getting close to the damn thing. <laughs> you think they're going to attack you? There's no, no different than a regular pig. Oh, they're mean, they're mean as shit, Jeff. Nah, they won't hurt you at all. Mean as shit. So, so your fucking thermal game's gonna step up now that you're getting this uh, PGA, getting this PGA dough. Nah, I just bought you, one. You did? I just bought a new one. Yeah, I. Uh, <laughs> I. It sounds bad, but yeah, I, I actually have a cousin uh, on my mom's side of the family, and my mom's side of the family, she, like most of them are like really liberal and everything like that and there's one cousin and i i have it's it's not even like my first cousin it's like my mom's first cousin or second cousin it's just cousin down the line and she's cool as shit like you know not liberal at all you know whatever and come to find out she works for pulsar Ooh. yeah didn't even know and i was like a messenger and I was like, hey cuz, like what's going on this and that? And uh she ended up hooking me up with it. And you know, I asked her, like, hey, you know, this is the one I got, you know, what what do you think is the next like best one? Like a newer one. Because I, I had a buddy, he he wanted one, but he wanted mine. Like I was like, Well, this is perfect. I'll just show you this. I you know, I don't need to make money on it like i'll just I'll sell it to you really cheap and just so you'll be able to like we can go together and uh i sold him that one and i was like out maybe like 1200 bucks after buying the brand new one with her you know hooking me up with it and uh yeah it's it's pretty nice what so where where's your next Where's you, where, where are you going waterfowl hunting? You're going to come Knox City and hang out with us for a couple of days at least. Where, where are you going this year? Going to Arkansas? Yeah, probably Arkansas. Uh, thinking, I think I'm going to Idaho uh, early, like late October. Where are you going to hunt at up there? I don't know. I just a buddy, like that same buddy I sold my thermal to, he's got a buddy and they've been going up there and – told us to come last year and obviously I'm not going to go without him because it was kind of him getting invited and he was going to take me and, um, 
I think it's probably around the Snake River or something like that. I don't know. But they kill the shit out of them. They kill they, a lot of greenheads up there. A bunch. Wyoming, yeah. Idaho, yeah. those warm springs, those warm water ponds and stuff. They shoot a shit right. lot of mallards up there. Yeah. That, I mean, that and Arkansas and probably Missouri, Texas, maybe Oklahoma a little bit. But I'm, je- I'm I- jealous of those guys in Montana and Idaho because they always get enough winter that they get birds. Oh, you know, yeah. Every I mean, it, it, it could be like a very mild winter, and they're, they're still oh, they're gone. stacked you know? every year. It takes yeah. a lot of winter to push them out of there where we're also dependent on the weather. Um, I did right. see where a meteorologist in Oklahoma City had his predictions for winter and said it was going to be a wet, wet winter. Lots of snow in Oklahoma and Panhandle of Texas. I hope that's true, but I hope we're not the only ones having winter, and I hope it's North Dakota and South Dakota. We need snow from fucking the Arctic Circle to the Red River down here is what we need to have a regular winter. It would be just nice to have a winter where Kansas is wide again. Right, right. That that and, hell, Kansas hadn't been, you want to talk about dry? The last few years, that... I think that's had a had a big impact on like almost the migration. I think it's like it's moving one way. I don't know if it's moving right, uh, you know, east or west or whatever. But it's, I think it's been so dry that you know I've had some buddies go up to Kansas and hunt some like WMAs and stuff like that, and they're like, dude, the the WMA you can only hunt like a quarter of it just because it's, it doesn't have a there's no water in it. You know, it's usually the thing is completely full and it's thousands of acres of flooded, you know, whatever. And now it's a quarter of it and you got everybody right on top of each think, other. And it's, I think it, Kansas is changing the rules too on their, are going to change the rules for next year on public hunting on for out of state people. Or fix, they're going to change really? a bunch of that shit. Yeah, they're going to limit big time on how many people out of state can come there to hunt. And that's one of them things. I don't blame them at all because if I was a taxpayer there yeah. and I wanted to hunt my lake and I was having to wait in line at a boat ramp for two hours for every yahoo yeah. out of state, it would make me mad also. Well, it's just like the same thing as Arkansas. If you're out of state, you can only hunt 30 days of the year. Right. Isn't it? Is something like that? I or, think they. I think there uh, are things in place that uh, – kind of limit the number of people that can that can come out there somehow i don't know what it is exactly but <clears throat> i think that there right. is something in place to kind of limit those limit the amount of out-of-staters that can come in right right well hell i i mean if there's a state that needs to do it and i'm not from there it's arkansas because everybody and their mother wants to go there it's almost i almost hate going there you know like it, because it's it takes the fun out of it just because it's, it gets like so dangerous yeah. you know right. you, people getting in fights over freaking holes and shit I'm like man fuck you you can have it like there's millions of fucking ducks here like I mean if you really want why can't we hunt together right. you know I mean you, you got five we got five fuck it let's let's shoot a banger let's, you know I mean let's make friends. Yeah, I mean it's. And then you got the boat races and all those other things going on. It's dangerous. Screw that man, screw that. Like I, I like living. <laughs> I, I don't want one wrong move and it you die over a damn duck. Yeah, I yeah. love duck hunting, and if I can make the money I make on the on the you know playing golf, that uh, doing that, like hunting ducks fuck i'd hunt ducks and i'd quit golf but i ain't gonna fucking die that's why i'm jealous of the guys in montana and idaho and wyoming and them places like there because they're not covered up with 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 people at and i'm sure there are some places there that does have some competition right and let's be honest with you when you get to the mountain states and stuff and you're busy you're probably gonna run into people that are probably a lot more friendly to hunting together than you are all the guys in Arkansas that get all pissy acting all the time. Right. And there's no sense to be that way. Well, I mean, I'm sure the people that are in Arkansas that get pissy is because they've been burned. 
I, I'm sure that ways, but I mean, like you said, it, you go from nothing to a big conflict or confrontation over something that's as simple as shooting a duck. Let's work together. Let's hunt together. And everybody, right. nobody wants everybody to know their secret spots, but there are no secret spots anymore. Right. I mean, it right. just it isn't going to happen. Oh, well, it's changed it. Well, we'd sure like to see you come out here and hunt with us sometime, and we wish you the best on the PGA Tour. I check on you on the Corn Ferry all the time. I always look at the leaderboard yeah. to see where you're doing. Just come out sometime in November. Just pencil it in. Uh, hey, you give me a day. November 5th and 6th, opening weekend. Be here. Yeah. I think it's November 5th and 6th. I think it is. Be here then. I'll, 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 I'm there. I'll, I'll send Andy you will send a, you some dates we got where we get you in. Yeah. Have a good time. Yeah. Yeah, just do that. But yeah, I'll, I'll shoot you a message whenever we get off of here. I think I've actually got your – you sent me your number in there. I might have your number already saved. But anyway, yeah, we'll get together and we'll figure out a date for you to get up here. Yeah, Sound for sure. What, what do you shoot? Like, y'all, shoot y'all shoot a bunch of A lot of specs, specs yeah. Yeah, yeah. Get something yeah. for your wall behind you. Perfect. Right, cool. Sounds cool good. Cool deal, man. Well, congratulations on your tour card. Uh, we've been rooting for you for a while now, so it's cool to see. And, uh, yeah. yeah, we'll share a bond together this uh, this waterfowl season. It'll be fun. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, bud. Take, Appreciate take care. It. What are you doing? What are you doing now? You're just going to be pig hunting until uh, till your next tournament. Pretty much. Dove hunt a little bit. Maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna try to go find some does. I'll probably go do that this afternoon. But hey, <laughs> probably not going to go to the golf no. course. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I played no. enough golf this year. You know, I'm, I'm going to play tomorrow with some guys. Uh, and yeah, I just. All I want to do is blow shit up right now. <laughs> work, work on that game. We got to scramble to win around here one of these days. <laughs> we'll talk. Yes, sir. All right, bud. We'll talk to you later. Be safe, and then I'll uh, I'll see you in just a little bit. A couple short months. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Bye. Bye. That's the life right there. I'm telling that you. That is. Get paid to play golf, and then go hunt. And loves hunting more than golfing. That's right. God bless him. All right. Living the dream. Gold Boston. Star Hunt this weekend. We appreciate everybody who's reached out, everybody that sent us stuff today. Cagney Bustamante sent some lanyards today for the Saw kids. That. I appreciate it. And Pill sent a bunch of stuff for the moms and the dads. Anyways, thank you all so much. God bless you all, and have a great week.